to hyperstream my Nanami. Oh, let me just uh, hyperstream her real quick. Okay, retreat. Alright. No, I quit the game again. Ah, oh, man. So, there is a bug with the keybinds in the test client where you can't change the button while quitting the game. So, I keep pressing escape and quitting because of muscle memory. But, Furo is already aware of this issue and they are working on it. So, make sure not to make this mistake on the launch of the PC client in case it doesn't get fixed in time. The PC client is releasing on May 15th, which is very soon, and here are the system requirements for it. Now, some people have very low-end hardware and are still able to run the PC client well because the game is just so well optimized. It runs very smooth at 120fps on my NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, as you can see at the top left in the gameplay footage. Okay, now, let me show you the settings you can do on the PC client. Let's start with the sound settings. You can change the volume of the BGM, effects and voice over here. It says voice in the top right, which is a typo as it is actually a button for muting all sounds. You can also choose between Japanese and Chinese voice acting and there is also an option for muting the game sounds when it's running in the background. Moving on to the graphic setting, you have the classic full screen, borderless and windowed options. You can customize graphics, resolution, shadows, VFX and reflection. You can set your FPS to 120 here and also adjust the bloom and distortion for those who don't like the flashiness in combat. But unfortunately there is no brightness setting yet. We also have HDR, FXAA and VSync options. In button position, you can customize the layout of your gameplay UI for solo and co-op or you can choose one of the two pre-configured layout options. Personally, I would like to max out the button size but it seems to be bugged in the test client right now. In the keyboard keys tab, you can customize the keybinds for movement, adjust your camera sensitivity, switch your camera mode and add additional keybinds for combat. I personally use my side mouse buttons for attack and dodge, but some people are having issues where the client won't recognize their extra mouse button. The attack rapid fire setting is very useful for characters like Luna and Vera Garnet who need to be able to attack without activating their core passive preemptively. You can just pull that button and it won't activate their core passive and just do their basic attack chain. In controller buttons, you can turn on controller mode and you can change the keybinds for your Xbox and PS5 controllers. I recommend trying to learn the default controls because many controller PC testers are having issues right now with their custom configurations. In the other settings, the UI shrink option adjusts the spacing between UI buttons. I highly recommend maxing it out if you're using your mouse to ping ops like me. You can also customize the loading screen if you want to. And I recommend keeping the cursor size to large because it makes it really easy to click on buttons in the PC client. You can change the size of damage numbers to whatever you want, but I recommend turning off ally damage number and ally VFX because it just flutters the screen. Lock settings should always be on manual lock with the display lock button. Manual lock on is a must for triggering QTE and certain other skills when enemies are far away. There is also a bug right now where you can't see the RC in your account on the PC client even though it's visible on Android but it will likely be fixed soon so don't be scared about your RC disappearing. I hope this was useful and if you would like to see more PGR and Wuthering Waves content, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a good day.